。ああ。わ、はい、かりました。Okay,、uh, welcome to the second session of the second day of Asia Cup 2016.、Um, I'm Mitsui Matsui from Mitsubishi Electric. I'm, uh, uh, it's, it's a great pleasure and honor to introduce、uh, one of the、uh, two papers that the program committee of Asia Cup 2016 uh, has decided uh, uh, to invite uh, to the Journal of、uh, Cryptology. Uh, the title of the paper is、uh, Non Linear Invariant Attack,、uh, Practical Attack on Full、uh, Scream, Ice Cream, and Midori Sixth Ho,、uh, written by Yosuke Todo,、uh, Gregor Render, and Yu Sasaki.、Uh, Todo san is going to uh, talk. Uh, please give us your talk. Thank you very much for the introduction. So, my name is Yosuke Todo from NTT Sekia Platform Laboratories. So, today's my Talk title is Nonlinear Invariant Attack. So, this work is joint work with、uh, Gregor Renda in Ruhr University, Bochum, and、uh, Yu Sasaki at the NTT Secure Platform Laboratories. Okay, so first of all, so I want to explain what happened by new attack. So, this is a case study of、uh, crypt analysis on Scream. So, Scream is a tweakable block cipher. So, this is a Uh, framework of a、uh, tweakable block cipher. So input is a plain text and secret key and tweak, and output is cipher text. So I find under the weak key setting, so Scream has following magical Boolean function g of x, and x is a 128 bit length. Then g of p plus g of c is always equal to g of t plus g of k for any plain text p. So, this is an example. So, now we choose tweak like this, and k is a secret key, is chosen from the weak key space. And、uh, in the condition of the weak key, so this 4 byte is always 0. So, in this case,、uh, g of k plus g of t is always 1. And this is a plain text is、uh, chosen from uniformly random, and the cipher text is computed from the screen block cipher. Then, so for any plain text P, G of P, is G of P plus G of C is always one. So, nonlinear invariant attack is a new type of cryptanalysis technique and,、uh, and there's a weak key setting. And surprisingly, this attack is a practical attack. And、uh, we can extend this attack to cipher text only message recovery attack under the reasonable assumption. And so, I have、uh, three applications. So, one is the、uh, screen.、Uh, this is a Caesar second round candidate authenticated encryption. And ice cream is a first round candidate. And、uh, this attack is, this attack is、uh, so attack、uh, middle 64, so which is a proposal block, cip block cipher of last Asia crypt. So, this is a summary of results. So, nonlinear invariant attack has two t y p e attack. One is a distinguishing version, another is a message recovery version. So, in the distinguishing version, so it is very easy. We, can only, we only correct、uh, k known plain text. Then, so we can distinguish、uh, the 
target cipher from ideal cipher, uh, whose success, success probability is 1 minus 2 to the 1 minus k. <coughs> and in the message recovery attack, so in the case of screen, we can recover 32 bits from only 33 software takes uh, using uh, with the time complexity 2 to the 15. So it's a practical time, time complexity. And the wiki space, uh, but uh, our attack is a wiki attack. And the Scream, has, uh, Scream uh, accepts 128-bit secret key, but the uh, wiki space is 2 to the 96. So the test is 2 to the minus 32. OK, so let's start the uh, main topic. So I first explain late related work. So nonlinear invariant attack has uh, two uh, related works. And the one is a uh, one is a uh, stream from linear cryptanalysis, and another is a uh, stream from invariant subspace attack. <coughs> okay, so first I explain uh, this stream. So, as you know, linear cryptanalysis uh, was proposed by Matsuisa in 1993. So, for the simplicity, I explain this attack a uh, key alternating structure. So, this is a round function. So xi is the input of the round function, and the xi plus 1 is the output of the round function. And uh, in the round function, the first uh, round key ki is xor, and this xor value is the input of the public function f. So the motivation of the linear cryptanalysis is to find linearly Boolean function fi and fi plus 1, such that uh, fi of x uh, fi over xi plus fi plus 1 and over xi plus 1 is highly biased. And now, so f is a linearly Boolean function, so it is very easy to join uh, so two linear approximations. And so we can append a linear, linear approximation sequentially. We can create a linear approximation for a target cipher. So nonlinear cryptanalysis is natural extension of the linear from the linear cryptanalysis. So linear cryptanalysis uses linear approximation, linear Boolean function. But uh, nonlinear cryptanalysis, so alternatively, uh, the, we use a nonlinear Boolean function, GI and GI plus one, and satisfying uh, this X value is highly biased. So the advantage of the nonlinear cryptanalysis is uh, we can find uh, so nonlinear Boolean function uh, for the bias is with more higher bias than linear cryptanalysis. So, but unfortunately, so the probability depends on the specific value. So now x is if if x is a print text. So it is easy because uh, attack uh, can know plain text value. But xi plus 1 depends on the round key, and att attack can, can, cannot know the ki. So the probability for next round uh, nonlinear approximation, uh, probability of nonlinear approximation depends on the specific value of xi plus 1. So we cannot join nonlinear mask for two rounds. So this is an insurmountable problem. So nonlinear invariant attack uh, uses another idea. So nonlinear invariant attack, we first alternatively limit at the space of the round key. <coughs> but so we only focus on the nonlinear Boolean function GI plus GI and GI plus 1, such that this XOR value is always constant. So we don't uh, use a probabilistic be behavior. So now, so this is a probability, uh, probability one. So we can easily extend uh, this uh, nonlinear approximations uh, for the arbitrary number of rounds. And uh, for the simplicity, so if uh, we can find the uh, nonlinear Boolean function G, and uh, so if as uh, a sorry, so previous GI and the GI plus one, but uh, if uh, GI is equal to GI plus one. So this property, this property is preserved in arbitrary number of rounds if all round key is a weak. Okay, so another stream 
is from invariant subspace attack uh, proposed by Lender et al. at 2011. So this is an overview of invariant subspace attack. So similar to the nonlinear invariant attack, as a round key space is uh, chosen from the weak key space. And first, the input x is chosen from the subspace u plus a. And uh, even if the key XORing, so u plus a, this uh, element always maps to u plus b. And even if the function f is separate, uh, this uh, element is maps to u plus a. And so repeat uh, this, uh, sub this uh, subspace. Uh, th so this subspace is preserved. So if the plain text p is chosen from u plus a, so cipher text is also uh, cipher text also belongs to u plus a. So by using this property, uh, render attack uh, so many ciphers uh, using uh, invariant subspace attack. So nonlinear invariant attack is uh, similar to the invariant subspace attack. So but the uh, invariant subspace attack uses uh, such subspace, but nonlinear invariant attack uh, uses uh, this uh, uh, subset uh, satisfying uh, the output of G is 0 or 1. So if uh, the <coughs> so this uh, element uh, maps to here and maps here and uh, repeat, so but uh, in the nonlinear invariant attack, it is no problem if uh, this uh, subspace uh, goes to this uh, subspace because uh, we use G, we use uh, so the function G is balanced function. So thanks to this structure, invariant subspace attack is a chosen plaintext attack, but nonlinear invariant attack is non plaintext attack. So this is a distinguishing version, so it is very easy. Assume EK has a nonlinear invariant G. So correct K non plain text uh, PJ, CJ, and uh, compute this extra value. And uh, for all pair, so this extra value is constant. And the probability that ideal cipher have this uh, pro property is 2 to the minus K plus 1. So next, so I want to explain uh, the extension to practical attack. So actually, we use uh, several attack assumptions. So she uh, chooses plain text attack, non plain text attack, and cipher text only attack. So CPA is a natural assumption for cryptographers. But uh, it is debatable in practical case. So, but uh, if uh, the target cipher, was, target cipher is broken under the, this assumption, so cryptographer says uh, this uh, target cipher is broken. So no plain text attack is weaker assumption than CPA. And uh, if uh, the target cipher is vulnerable against this assumption, so it sometimes holds in practical case. So clearly, cipher text only attack is uh, weak, more, the most weak assumption. But it is unlikely to happen for cryptographers because uh, it is information theoretically impossible with that uh, assumptions. So, but if possible, it causes no negligible risks in practical case. So this is our attack assumption. So attacker can, uh, our assumption is attacker can correct multiple ciphertext blocks whose original message is the same, but the IBO is different. So now we have one plain text block, and this plain text block is encrypted using different IV, and we can correct this ciphertext block. In this case, so we can recover the plain text block from only ciphertext block. So I have to discuss uh, this assumption, whether this assumption is practical or not. So actually, it is very difficult to answer this question because uh, it depends on the application. So, but I think it is reasonable assumption because uh, example case. So, for example, application sometimes sends a cipher text of a password, and the, of course, password is a secret. And for the authentication, and the attackers know the behavior of the application, 
So attacker can collect the cipher that excludes uh, original message is the same. So in such uh, situation, uh, we can uh, have uh, this uh, uh, framework. We can have this framework so we can recover the password from only cipher text. So the attack procedure is very simple. So now EK has nonlinear invariant. And so this is the case of CBC mode. So now plain text is a secret, and the uh, IV and the cipher text is uh, public. So now EK has nonlinear invariant. We have this equation, and the, this value is always constant. So now CJ minus 1 is known, and CJ is known, but PJ is, guess, uh, PJ is uh, unknown. So we guess PJ and uh, confirm whether this value is constant or not. So, uh, so if we want to recover t bits from t bits of PJ, so trivially, so it, it requires 2 to the t time complexity. But uh, now, so we use a special nonlinear Boolean function g. So thanks to this structure, so practically the time complexity to recover t bits of PJ is at most t2 to the 3. So next, so I explain how to find nonlinear invariance. So this is a core idea of the invariance subspace attack. So for the simplicity, assume as a KSP type round function. So this is a round function, and first uh, round key is XORD, and the SBOX in is, uh, SBOX is uh, applied in parallel, and this output is diffused by the linear function L. So first, so I want to find nonlinear invariant for one SBOX. But the size of SBOX is generally small, for example, 4 bit or 8 bit. So it is not difficult to find nonlinear invariant for one SBOX. So by exhaustively search, so we can find an uh, example for the Xbox in screen. So like this, g of x is x1, x2 plus xl plus x2 plus x5. So this, body, this Boolean function is nonlinear invariant for a screen Xbox. And then for all x and s is a screen Xbox, g of x is always equal to g of s, g of s of x plus 1. And now, so we extend this nonlinear invariant to nonlinear invariant for the S box layer. So, but now S box is uh, independently applied. So the function GI is nonlinear invariant for the S S box. So the sum function is nonlinear invariant for the S box layer for any uh, sum set. And next, uh, round key is XOR. So if one in k, so round key k, uh, involved in only linear term of the function g, the sum function is nonlinear invariant for k xor. So it's a very simple example. So this is a nonlinear invariant for the screen mass box. So x1, x2 is uh, involved in nonlinear term, but other term is only linear. So if k1 is equal to k2 is equal to 0, so this equation holds. So this is a nonlinear invariant. So finally, I have to overcome the linear, fu linear function L. So actually, it is the most difficult uh, so for the <laughs> to search for a nonlinear invariant. So as, uh, I find a vulnerable structure. So if the linear function is binary orthogonal, and there is a quadratic invariant for the S-box, so this sum function is nonlinear invariant for the linear layer. So this uh, property is derived from uh, the invariance of an inner product. So now, so the g is a quadratic function. So we can represent uh, this uh, Boolean function like this. And now, uh, let's focus on this term. So this is an uh, uh, inner product. And so, M is a, but if M is an orthogonal matrix, so this uh, value is equal to this value, and this Boolean function is uh, completely equal to G of X. So this, uh, if L is a binary orthogonal and uh, G is a quadratic function, so such a G function G is a nonlinear invariant for the linear layer. 
So finally, I want to explain practical attack on full screen. So screen perfectly follows our assumption. So first, orthogonal matrix uh, was used uh, because, that, because of the duality of differential and linear cryptanalysis. And the nonlinear term is applied to only second and third row, but the round cons constant is only XOR with first row. So round constant is not uh, so, uh, so round constant is not uh, important for the nonlinear invariant attack. And uh, all round key are the same as the secret key. So now uh, nonlinear term is a second and third row. So uh, we choose weak key space, uh, weak key space, satisfying this, uh, this 60, 60, 32 bits is zero. So this uh, secret key is a uh, weak key. So, but, uh, so now, so uh, I want to explain how to break a scream authenticated encryption. So scream, so, Scream uh, is authenticated encryption, and so unfortunately, the print text is directly input uh, of the EK. So, but let's focus on the last block. So, last block as uh, input is only the length of PM minus one. So, we attack the last block. Then P, the length of PM, P, PM minus one is unknown, but the length is known. So this value is known, and this value is known, and this value is unknown. So we guess PM minus one, and the recover this value. Okay, so I conclude my talk. So I propose a new type of cryptanalysis, nonlinear invariant attack, and uh, I explain how to find nonlinear invariant. And so I explain how application to uh, Scream, Ice Cream, and Middle East 64. And so we can recover the 32 bits of message in the last block on Scream and Ice Cream. And uh, in the Middle East 64, we can recover the 32 bits of message in every block under the CBC, CTR, OFB, CFB uh, mode of operation. So thank you very much. Uh, uh, we have time uh, for a couple of questions. Oh, yes. Adi. Beautiful result. Um, in the case of Scream, you were lucky that uh, uh, it had uh, just the right properties for your analysis, and uh, you could uh, uh, find out the uh, nonlinear invariant. Uh, in a general uh, scheme, uh, how would you propose checking whether uh, uh, the new block cipher which had been proposed has or does not have nonlinear invariant? The search space is huge. So uh, is there any uh, mechanism how to do it? So first of all, as a most difficult uh, of the, mo the most difficult point of the nonlinear invariant attack is to overcome the linear layer. So, and, uh, so if uh, the linear layer is uh, trivially so overcome, so, uh, so nonlinear cryptanalysis uh, is, uh, successful, uh, was successful. So maybe quadratic invariant, so if the S-box is not quadratic invariant, so in this case, uh, I, I think nonlinear invariant uh, that doesn't work. So, but uh, if the S box is four bit, so I search for uh, almost well, many four bit S box, but the four bit S box always have a nonlinear in quadratic invariant. So, if we use eight bit S box, so it is very easy to avoid nonlinear invariant attack. So, the four bit S box, so it is difficult to avoid the nonlinear invariant for one S box, so we need to use uh, so non-orthogonal non-orthogonal matrix or 
very high diffuse, high, uh, high dense uh, round constant. So if uh, such a, so a countermeasure, so I think a nonlinear, nonlinear invariant attack uh, doesn't work. have two questions for you. Uh, the first, um, um, can uh, your brother's uh, attack, can, uh, to, uh, can your brother's attack uh, uh, apply to other block cipher than uh, Scream? And uh, the second. Um, sorry, sorry, the first question, so Scream? Sorry, I, I don't understand your question. So. Uh, uh, in your in your presentation, you can attack uh, to the screen, uh -huh. right? So I I want to ask, uh, can your brother's attack uh, to um, uh, apply to other to other other block cipher? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, uh, so first, I and answer the question. So yeah. So. Uh, and, uh, so uh, f first of all, so the, our attack uses a weak attack, and so if uh, the target cipher is not lightweight block cipher, and that's a very complicated key scheduling algorithm, so it is very difficult to apply this attack. So, so as far as I search, uh, this, uh, this, uh, I, I can find uh, these three applications. But uh, as a target cipher, so first, let's see uh, the lightweight block cipher. And so with that key schedule, uh, lightweight block cipher with a very simple key scheduling algorithm. And so, it, so, so if uh, the additional application is possible, so such cipher is uh, maybe about a, as a possible as an application. Thank you. And uh, another question. Yeah. Um, the final goal of your attack is to find the secret key or the plain text. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so the, uh, so I'm, so the, this type attack is a message recovery attack, so we never recover the secret key. So distinguishing version, so <laughs> actually we can recover one bit of secret key. So, because uh, from G of P plus G of, uh, D, D, G, G of P plus G of C is equal to G of T plus G of K, G of K plus G of T, and T is uh, public, and P and C is uh, public, so we can recover G of K. And, and uh, this information is only one bit, so I don't have any idea to recover more than one bit.